AMD's GPU launch in December, not shaping up to be all that good. Netflix decides to add some ads to your ad experience while you're watching Netflix as well as Nvidia, giving you a free 25% performance boost. But before we dive into that, the biggest news you need to know is that we are one week away from the Cannonball for the Cure charity stream that we're gonna be doing live here at UFD Tech, where we're raising money to cure my son's rare disease. We have huge sponsors, we have huge giveaways. Kyler, give me giveaways. Bring me the stuff we're giving away so I can show it to the hot news people. Bring me giveaways. Bring me giveaways. Can you catch a whole PC? I can catch a whole PC. Uh, we got the 7600X plus 6650XT PC. Uh, we got an RTX 4090. We've got 30 LTTstore.com screwdrivers that were given away, as well as a whole host of other stuff, including a PS5, a gaming projector, a gaming monitor, multiple PCs that are gonna be given away. And all you have to do to enter is either donate to the charity, every $5 gets you an entry into the giveaway, or just come watch, come support us, participate on that over on Twitch. You'll earn channel points where you can enter for free, but it's gonna be a great time all around. Either save up the money for donation or save up your time to come watch us October 21st, starting at 9 a.m. Eastern. We're a, a week away. Are you excited, Kyler? I'm so excited. That didn't sound enthusiastic enough. I'm not seeing enough moment. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast and Kyler presses buttons that make doodaloo sounds while I'm trying to film. And AMD is gonna doodaloo your PC by launching RDNA 3. We're expecting the announcement to happen on November 3rd. And by expecting, I mean, AMD has literally told us that is the date, but now we have details coming out from a well-known leaker with regards to this next generation of cards, the RX 7000 series, and it is that it will be launched, released in November and launched in the second half of December. The, the, the phraseology around this, like they're launching the cards November 3rd, they're just, they're gonna talk about them on stage and hopefully Lisa Sue won't just say, hey, look at the performance while they zoom into her face. Anyways, uh, the first flagship and the second flagship, so likely something like a 7900 XT and a 7800 XT. However, the top performance is difficult to compete with the 40 and I hope the price will not be as common confident as Ryzen. And then somebody asked, the performance can't compete. Is that in regular gaming or is that in ray tracing? And it turns out that it's in both. So it might be that AMD is actually not going to be getting better at ray tracing to the point where they're competitive with Nvidia. And especially after seeing the ARC launch from Intel and seeing how good those GPUs were at ray tracing, it actually would put AMD at the bottom of the pack if they don't make substantial improvements. So that is kind of a bummer to hear the next generation RDNA 3 cards might not be able to keep up with Nvidia's huge leap in performance that we've seen in the RTX 4090 in both regular rasterization scenarios as well as in ray tracing scenarios and with DLSS 3.0 notwithstanding, especially because AMD obviously has FSR and they have their own upscaling technology. It, Nvidia is kind of in a class of their own with DLSS, but it does look like the RX 7000 series, at least according to this primary initial report. Obviously we have to wait until AMD comes out on November 3rd and shows us benchmarks, but maybe don't get your hopes up and instead look for a really good price to performance competitor. I mean, AMD launched the 6900 XT at $1,000 back when things were bad. Maybe if they know they're not gonna compete with the big dogs, they launched the 7900 XT a little less than that, like $800, $700. Could we get back to the time of flagship GPUs being 700 bucks? What do you think, Kyler? Nope. nope. Kyler says no, money doesn't go down, money only goes up. Mm -hmm. Money only goes up. But there are some details coming out about the next gen cards from AMD and the fact that it should have DisplayPort 2.1, which is unannounced at this point. But that is the current rumor, especially given the fact that people are upset that Nvidia only put DisplayPort 1.4a on the RTX 4090 card, that this is just something that people want to see on their next gen cards. And Nvidia has said, you don't need it. The DisplayPort 1.4 is good enough for AK60. So just calm down. What do you think of not having DisplayPort 2.0? and NVIDIA's GPUs. I wanna hear from you down below in the comments, but again, we do have to wait until November 3rd for AMD to come out and show us what their next gen's capable of. They have said that it's gonna be much better in performance per watt. It should be better in ray tracing, but we just obviously, there's more competition coming in from all sides and AMD might have to compete by dropping pricing Hopefully, hopefully they are not as aggressive as they've been with Ryzen where they decided, hey, 
we're going to charge 300 bucks for a 7600X, even though you probably should just get a 5800X 3D for roughly the same price and the motherboard and RAM are going to be cheaper. You know what's going to be cheaper? Today's video sponsor, if you use our coupon code. Today's video is sponsored by a brand new favorite of mine, and that is Cometeer Coffee. My friends, this is brewed coffee that is flash frozen, delivered straight to your door and honestly is impeccable. This is probably one of the best ways to enjoy delicious coffee in just under a minute. So Cometeer Coffee is unlike any other coffee experience that I've had because it's flash frozen to lock in freshness, which means that it's delivered to you in the best state possible. And they come in recyclable capsules that make it so easy for you to make your coffee every morning or whenever you need it. For me, because I drink my coffee black, it's as simple as taking one of the capsules, running under it a little bit of water so that the puck can actually slide out into my coffee glass and then just pour in water from my instant kettle. And then bam, I'm off enjoying my coffee in under a minute. And Cometeer comes in a wide variety of different coffee types for you to enjoy, whether you want a light, medium, or dark roast, or if you want to drink decaf, you can do that as well. My favorite one that I've been drinking is the Mocha Java, which is super smooth and then also has a hint of chocolate behind it, which is just absolutely delicious. And again, one of the most important things for me is just how quickly this delicious cup of coffee can be done. I don't have to do pour overs. I don't have to do a French press. I can make it just so quickly by boiling my kettle, which I have to do every morning to prepare my son's breakfast and then using the leftover water to prepare my cup of coffee. So there's no need to go to a coffee shop because this will save you time and money. And it's a fantastic setup. You get monthly shipments to your door, you select which type of roast that you actually want. And then you just keep your capsules in the freezer and take it out right before you're ready to go if you want hot coffee or you can melt it in the fridge the night before in case you want something like iced coffee. But best part is for a limited time, you can get $40 off your first two orders using my code UFD at cometeercoffee.com forward slash UFD tech. If you've been wanting to try Cometeer, you want to get into this, you can use my link and my code again, which is cometeer.com forward slash UFD tech and enter code UFD to save $40 off your first two orders. Big thanks to Cometeer for sponsoring today's video and for the coffee. It's, this is fantastic. And you know what that coffee gets me thinking of? Crypto stocks, that's right, Bitcoin. Uh, it, it had a bad moment. It was down like below 19,000. It crashed to like 18,294, a little bit less than that. Uh, but then it's rallied back up. It, nothing's really changed. Ethereum also suffered a similar fate, but again, really flat on the day. And Dogecoin also very flat on the day. And Reese flatly deliver me my UFD deals. I want no inflection in your voice. Thank you, Reese, for not obeying my orders because you can't hear me because I record this before you can actually know what's going on. You're a great guy, Reese. And what's also a great game is Minecraft, but people don't want you to play it because there's, there's massive DDoSs happen. Somebody did a big old DDoS on Minecraft uh, when, when there was an online server thing happening. 2.5 terabits per second, Cloudflare reporting. That's the largest DDoS that, attack they've ever seen against a Minecraft server. Fun. It's just a big number. 2.5 terabits is a metric butt ton. And maybe Amazon's gonna deliver that to you from their space internet, probably not. But Project Kuiper being slated to launch sometime in early 2023 after suffering several delays, Project Kuiper being the competitor to something like SpaceX's Starlink, where they're gonna deliver satellite internet and make it so that broadband is accessible. And they also have an agreement with Verizon so that they can be a backhaul for remote LTE or 5G cell towers. So kind of crazy a cohesive environment. Whether or not they actually continue to do that, especially with Blue Origin not really uh, staying on track with their rocket launches, we'll have to see if Project Kuiper can get its belt off. And Netflix taking the belt off of the ads. I don't know what that segue is. Netflix gonna give you ads. Okay, November 3rd is when it's coming out, okay? You can get an ad subscription to Netflix for $7 a month, which is the basic with ads plan. So it does make it cheaper. It's gonna be available in seven different countries. 720p, you can't download the content. And in case you don't want ads, you just go with the regular setup. But the ads will be 15 to 30 seconds long and be before and during the actual content. And there will be broad targeting based on the content that you're actually watching. So it's gonna be $7 a month 
with ads, $10 a month without ads for the basic package, and then $15.49 a month for standard and $19.99 a month for premium. So if you already have a Netflix subscription, they're not just gonna give you ads. It seems like people felt like that what was happening. They like were complaining. You have to choose this one and it's just making their regular plan cheaper. It's not like they're not taking anything away from any consumer by introducing this. So they're just making it slightly more affordable. And what's not gonna be affordable is a new video game because they're all really expensive. But Spider-Man Miles Morales is coming out to PC on November. November 18th that getting announced it's gonna have all of the latest features DLSS 3.0 support unlocked frame rate ray tracing all of that goodness November 18th in case you want to pick that up and in case you want to pick up a founders edition RTX 4090 well Nvidia is gonna have a new way for you to do that this was actually one of the reports we were seeing with the card was that there were no founders editions available at Best Buy on launch day at least according to everything I saw on the internet but that could be because Nvidia is looking to roll out their verified priority access program which will allow you to actually get in line to buy this at Best Buy. But the trick is you actually have to sign into GeForce Experience, but this will be available at Best Buy in the United States, scan in the United Kingdom, MBB in Germany and the Netherlands and LDLC in France, Italy and Spain. So you have to register with GeForce Experience and you have to have a 10 series, 16 series, 20 series or 30 series card in order to participate in this, which is a little weird, kind of if you're if you're on the 970, Pathetic, you, you don't have enough money for the 40 series. You're sad, you're gross. Nvidia doesn't love you anymore. Nvidia seeming to think, hey, you saved your money for a few years, you don't matter. Especially because we're now seeing that scalp pricing of the 4090 on eBay is sky high. GPU selling for up to $4,000, but being in the 25 to $3,200 range with 135 GPUs sold two days ago over on eBay. Now this, does seem like it could potentially be the start of another scalp apocalypse where people are just not able to get their hands on the cards. However, if this kind of happens on every day one launch with every company that's ever launched a GPU going all the way back to the nine series, there's not enough stock on the first day. So the question becomes not, did Nvidia give everybody what they wanted? Rather, how quickly are they going to be able to restock? Are we gonna see cards now hitting store shelves after the initial launch date that we're gonna be able to get our hands on them? And then the suckers who bought them right now because they needed it day one for some reason, well, then they're just gonna be out, you know, seven, 800 bucks that they paid to the scalper, but everybody else is gonna get it. It's hard to say, we don't know, but could it be that they're gonna get harder to find because Nvidia is gonna make it easier to mine Oh, mining's coming back. Nvidia is getting rid of the light hash rate limiter that's on their GPUs with the latest drivers. They're just getting rid of it. They introduced this back sometime last year in order to make it so that GPUs, when they detect that they were working on a mining algorithm, they would slow down to about half performance. And now in the latest driver update, people are testing the 3080 Ti as well as the 3060 actually working at full hash rate. So Nvidia proving what I've kind of been saying all along is that they just decided to arbitrarily limit their customers Customers on what workload they got to do with the products that they bought. And now that Ethereum has gone proof of stake rather than proof of work, they're gonna remove it, but that still means that the cards can be used for mining. It just like, it solved a pain point to like address public outcry, but was like a bad consumer move. Like why take away a feature that I have paid for just because you want to. And it didn't help the stock situation. People were still buying Nvidia GPUs hand over fist. They didn't get easier to buy after LHR came in. It's a whole hullabaloo complication, which the 4090 seems like it might be because Der Bauer over on his YouTube channel breaking down 4090 cards, finding on a gigabyte one, there were NVLink fingers that could have potentially been there. So we could have had multiple GPUs, but it's gone. It was, it was, I mean, people don't use multi GPU. The software support's not there. I understand why people are upset that it's gone, but the just vast majority of people who would use it just start. In reality, it's a small subsect of people who are upset about it. Kyler, are you upset about it? He's upset about everything, and he's gonna be happy that Nvidia is giving you free performance, though. Again, with those latest drivers that we're talking about, substantial improvement into DX12 performance, up to 24% better in several different games across the stack of their RTX GPU. So, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 24% better. Call of Duty Vanguard, is that a real game? Is that a game that matters? 12% better. Cyberpunk, 
20% better. So a large improvement coming from the latest drivers in case you want faster performance for free. But in case you wanna buy a new GPU, well, we're getting refreshes of the RTX 3060, which was gonna have GDDR6X memory and the RTX 3070 Ti. We're finding that come out in different retailers showing this off, but also again, in that latest drivers update, they are showing off those new GPUs in those drivers where the 3070 Ti and the new 3060 are actually devices listed in that driver. So Nvidia moving, shaking and baking, not just on the 40 series, but on a lot of stuff all around. And I'm all around the world. We'll be back with hot news at some point. We're gonna have a hot news before the cannonball happens, which is actually in one week. Holy crap, we're one week away from the cannonball for the Cure Charity stream. I'll be back here for that later hot news at some point.